Okay, looks like we are live. Just a couple minutes left and we will get underway. Alright, doesn't drive too well with these legs up. Do do. Good to know they work. We. Alright, looks like it is 1 o'clock, which means it's time to get this party started. So welcome everyone, this is Black6 from BZ Power, and today we aim to finish this set. Let me go uh, fix the overlay there. Come on, overlay, there we go. 42043, the Mercedes-Benz Arokes 3245, with its 2,793 pieces. Retailed for $230. It's been a lot of fun. Yesterday was probably the most exciting day because we got to do all this pneumatic stuff in the arm. It was the first time I've really done much uh, with pneumatics. In the end, we installed a battery box and had the compressor and everything working, and it was pretty fantastic. Um, so we'll do a quick demo of all the different things we've got going on. So there we go. There is that on... And somewhere here, nope, maybe not that, there we go, There's the, that's the arm, alright, I think we have to lift up the arm a little bit, let's see if I can remember how to, there we go, come on, just need to get some air in the line there, alright, so arm up, and now one of these will swing the arm. Oh, that retracts the legs there. Can swing the arm around. And it's pretty complicated. Yeah, I keep doing this the wrong way. Because you have to like be going back and forth with the battery box and like these switches on the side, and then if you want to put the arm, you gotta deal with like these four valves. So there is a lot, uh, a lot going on any given point in time. Alright, let's see, one of these, nope, wrong way. So we'll pull that out a bit. And then we can, is it retract, maybe? Or extend? Got the air pumping. Not sure why nothing is going on there. Alright, let's try a claw. There's the claw. Might be a loose connection somewhere that's causing the other one to not work. So yeah, lots of uh, cool functions there. Uh, mostly motorized. The actual drivetrain is not motorized, so it's not like a remote controlled model. Um, but the wheels are linked to the engine, so as you roll over along, the pistons will fire in the inline six engine and all that fun stuff. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, been a lot of fun. And now we actually get to do the finishing touches today. Um, 
So that is going to be finishing the cab, and then there's a dump truck bed that's going to go on the back. I didn't show off the dump truck mechanism, but we'll definitely have an opportunity to demonstrate that uh, at some point today. And welcome, Ignica, Aaron, and Voximo. Uh, one thing, uh, as far as the giveaways go today, I have not reset it from yesterday. So if you entered the giveaway yesterday and did not win, you already have a chance to win today. If you entered the giveaway yesterday and you did win, you will not be winning again today. Just trying to spread the free sets around a little bit. And if you accidentally enter your name again, not a big deal. We will filter out all those duplicate entries before we pick a winner. So we're on stage five, which has a lot of bags, six bags, and I'm guessing at least, if not this one, I'm holding the next one, we'll probably have a smaller bag inside of it. So lots and lots of parts. And as far as I can tell, based on the picture, we're just building the cab in bag five. See, it looks like we actually have two little bags in here. One of the bags is literally just black friction pins. So I think I'm going to combine this bag with one of the others. No, the, this bag also has black friction pins, and this bag that I opened before has black friction pins. So plenty of black friction pins to go around to hold all these Technic panels together. Oh, it's not just black friction pins. There are also... Some one by two trans orange plates in here. All right, just gotta move these around a bit. Give me some space to work here. I'm guessing at this stage in the game, we're gonna start having a lot more stickers to apply. Still have a, a good number here on our sticker sheet that need to go on. Our uh, first day last weekend, we hardly applied any stickers. Yesterday was a few more. Mainly for the controls. Today, I guess it's going to be a lot of the detail stickers, like the license plate. Looks like there might be some rear view mirror stickers and some other things like that. Looks like the first part we're working here is going to be like the front bumper and grill assembly. I'm just going to have to do the same thing twice. So just doubling all of my parts here.
it's pretty impressive when you get to the final stages of a Technic build. Just like the how finished they make it look, but still just using Technic pieces. It's not like you, know, you build this whole Technic frame and then you're putting system bricks on top to cover it up. It's like Technic through and through. pins out of the way. Since those would be the reserve pins once I run out of all the other ones floating around. Get easier to find stuff. Hey there, Owen and Vastus. Welcome, welcome. Now oh, this pesky errand's getting in the way. Hey there, Lego Teen Builder. That looks like we're going to be building the headlights right now. Going to be using some handy flick fire missile pieces. I always like seeing those repurposed for non flick fire things.
Hey there, Siddhartha. Yes, the goal is to finish today. So here we've got our headlight assembly using uh, some system bricks. We've got our flick fire missile bars sticking out here. And we're actually going to be using the uh, property that these bars will fit inside a Technic pin. So if you have like a Technic pin, you can slide that on there. You can do that when the pin is actually installed. There's a little more friction, but we can do that on there. And that is part of our headlight assembly now. Hey there, Anthony and Lego Team Builder. We have not received a Hogwarts castle from Lego yet. I uh, would definitely like to uh, to build one of those. I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but that just looks like a really fantastic build. Uh, I'm sure that if we were to get one, I wouldn't be able to build it, or at least not on my own. Chelsea, uh, my girlfriend, and our household's huge Harry Potter fan would insist that she was uh, involved in the process as well. So we'll have to figure that out if and when that happens. So here we've got the license plate. I'm not sure what uh, country that's supposed to be. If I had to guess Germany, if only because it's a Mercedes-Benz, which is of course a German auto manufacturer, but maybe someone in the chat can uh, correct me there. What is my favorite thing that Lego has sent me? That is a tricky question. There's, been a, there's a lot of great sets that we've gotten to build thanks to Lego supporting the community. And I assume we're just kind of limiting the discussion to things I've streamed. Um, hmm. The Slave 1 was pretty awesome. I definitely, definitely love seeing that on display. And that was a really fun build. Ninjago City, probably also up there. Let's see what other awesome builds have we done thanks to like the Saturn 5 have to include the Saturn V on that list. Not quite as big as Ninjago City or the Slave 1, but as a big fan of the space program and the moon race, 
I uh, definitely enjoyed that build a lot. We're doing some more of the light clusters here. So under, so what is the biggest thing they've sent? It's probably the UCS Death Star, I think. Um, I'm trying to think of what other large sets exist that uh, would be in contention there. And I think it would have to be the Death Star. I would say, you know, obviously the Hogwarts Castle would beat that. Um, I, remember, I think Brickset recently posted a list of like the biggest Lego sets, and I'm pretty sure the Death Star was on there. And that was the biggest one that I have built. Or Ninjago City. That one's up there too, so yeah. Probably either UCS Death Star or Ninjago City would be the biggest we've been sent. And, you know, while I do love Bionicle, and CCPS in general, I mean, building, you know, Kopaka just still kind of pales in comparison to a giant Star Wars ship or something like that. Here is our front bumper so far, license plate. I do like how we're using some Technic beams to kind of make it, give it an interesting grill shape there. We've got some different light clusters on here, turn signal, probably like headlights and high beams or something like that. Well, I think we're about to do the real headlights. Those might just be like running lights or something. some good old boot bottom parts. And no, Lego has not talked about sending us the Falcon. So here is our headlights. Um, and currently, with like the way that they are doing their support programs for fan sites like BZ Power, I honestly do not expect us to get a Falcon from them since generally we have a limit on like how much we can request at a single time. Headlights. And that limit is lower than the cost of a Falcon. Uh, so unless they decided they wanted to send us one outside of that program, then uh, 
I doubt we'll be getting a Falcon. So then it's up to me to save my pennies and my VIP points. chat while putting something in and this all falls apart. Favorite dinosaur. Well, that's a tough one. I'll have to think about that. Um, meanwhile, will I get Cloud City? Um, uh, it remains to be seen. I don't know. We have built a couple of. Well, you know, we built the Death Star. We built Hoth. Um, as far as like the kind of UCS playsets go, they're definitely fun builds. But as I look at like Lego sets I have kind of still put together on display around my house, those always seem like some of the ones that I can you know sacrifice and disassemble, so to speak, before others. Because they don't quite have the same display power as like the UCS X-Wing or something. I got some more flick fires coming in. And that said. Somewhere hiding, I do have an Endor and a Sandcrawler, the UCS versions, that would like to do builds of at some point. Part of that is just that I don't know where I would put them when I'm done. They are pretty cool. So this is interesting. So we just built this. I think we're gonna kind of be making the grill here using these Technic pieces. And this is only kind of covering oh, half of it here. And if I'm doing this right, it's gonna be at an angle. And so I'm assuming we're gonna be making a, a mirrored version that's gonna go kind of at an angle on the other side. It's a pretty interesting way to get that shape. Right, favorite dinosaur, I almost forgot. Hmm. Man, it's so hard to pick just one. Like, there's some, some cool ones. Like I've, as a kid, I remember always really liking the Allosaurus. They're not quite as ferocious and big as the T-Rex, but still pretty awesome. It's always the Deinonychus, or Deinonychus, however you pronounce it. I can't remember after all these years, but that one was another one I was a fan of.
And of course, the little, little kid in me who watched The Land Before Time on repeat. But of course, I want to say like an Apatosaurus. Hey there, Dollar. Welcome. So here's our mirrored assembly here to go on the other side. And so you can see, in addition to being mirrored, this one has the longer black half beam below the light gray beam, and this one has them reversed so they can go on the same pin and be the same depth. gives us kind of a nice little sloped uh, grill there. Got some extra supports in the back here to hold them at the proper angle, make them nice and sturdy so they don't flop around. So that's pretty, pretty neat little design there. All right, so I think we're just about done with the front bumper. Finished bumper. Very solid at this point. I think she has a good bit of weight to it, even. It's probably actually easier to drive it a little bit to get to the right position. And now, there's a couple little axles putting out here from the engine. And there are some holes in this main beam that's sticking up straight that this looks like we'll line up with. And then some pins that pop in. And then 
pushing these red pins. There we go. Now it is solid. I can pick it up just by the bumper alone. But now we're going to the back to do the rear bumper. Now it's going to be much less involved, it looks like. Oops. Definitely don't think I have a least favorite Technic set since I've built so few recently. I can only really have an opinion on that. Sticker time, time for the rear license plate. So there we go, there's the back bumper with the license plate. We didn't talk about it when we did the front one. But that looks like it's supposed to be saying like Kossman, uh, K-O-S-S-M-A-N-N. -S -S so that might be like the uh, the designer or the graphic artist or something like that. They like to hide their names in sets like that. And it just pops on the back there. And now it looks like we're gonna make the front cab. Glad you got your priorities in order there, Dollar. Hopefully your roommate likes uh, Lego too, or at least can put up with uh, you liking it. What Technic set from this year is the most interesting to me? Hmm. I'm not going to take the easy answer there and say the Bugatti. Cause as uh, That's more of just a Technic set that looks cool. It really doesn't interest me from a technical perspective too much. Um... Yeah, I'm sure it'd be a fun build and pretty challenging build because it's got so many pieces. But while it will look cool, it'll have all sorts of functions, right? Just like the Porsche, it has like a working transmission and everything. Very awesome. Um, you know, something like this that's got like power functions and pneumatics, I think, interests me uh, a lot more. So from that perspective, let me just make sure I'm assembling this right. Okay. So from like an interesting perspective, I might go with that Volvo, like a uh, construction vehicle set. I'm pretty sure that's got some power functions and stuff in it.
And it certainly looks really cool too, because it's like a concept construction vehicle. It has like a drone that pops out the back. And then of course there's the big crane this year as well. That's got all the power function and everything, I think. Maybe it was you, Anthony, or someone when yesterday or last weekend was talking about how it can like apparently like lift some crazy amount of weight. So something like that would be pretty pretty cool too. Peace overboard. Bright red, so I should certainly be able to find it easily. Ah, there it is. Okay. Least favorite Star Wars buildable figure. There have been a few that have just been kind of like boring. Uh, let's see, who would be in the running for least favorite? Might have to go with like that first uh, Luke Skywalker. I guess it's the only Luke Skywalker, but that Luke Skywalker or General Kenobi, just because the head molds back then were, were still a little, little on the creepy side. And Luke especially, I guess Obi-Wan at least had a, a decent cape, but Luke especially, you know, he didn't really have a lot of like any sort of play features or anything. He was very, very basic uh, for the line back then. And they've definitely improved the figures a lot since that first wave. More recent ones, probably go with the um, Elite TIE Fighter pilot. As someone who loves TIE Fighters and like just the Imperial ships in general, I think they have a really cool design aesthetic. Um, I felt that that figure was just so unnecessary and very basic, I mean, nothing like fancy about his design. Pretty boring parts, right, all black. I mean, kind of the same thing with uh, Luke Skywalker as well. You know, there's nothing exciting about the, the design or the parts, really. Um, at least Luke is, like, an important character, whereas the elite TIE fighter pilot, I mean, they... They appear in the movie, but they're not memorable. Like, I, I remember before seeing the movie and seeing the Praetorian Guard and building the Praetorian Guard set, I'm just like, why are we getting, like, a guard and not, you know, like, Snoke or something? But then after you see the film, you're like, all right, I am glad we got that guard set. Oh, used up all of the friction pins in that bin. Now I have to go to my friction pin bin. Plus the Praetorian Guard had some awesome parts in it too, right? Like those, that new red shoulder armor and just a bunch of cool red parts in general. Some parts that were new in red.
What do I think of the heavy forklift set? Uh, not familiar with that one offhand. I would have to go look it up at some point. Take a gander. Ah uh, yes, cramped dorms. Dorm life definitely uh, gives you a new perspective on uh, on life and minimalist uh, lifestyle, bare necessities, so to speak. I think I've only had the instruction booklet rip on me maybe like once or twice. But yeah, it is quite hefty. The biggest thing I dislike about these instruction booklets is that they're a pain to, uh, to store. Because, you know, they're thick that like, you know, you pretty much have to put them in like on a bookshelf or something but the paper is still thin enough that they don't like stand up very well 
So they're constantly like falling over and stuff. Let's see, I'm on 356. So yeah, like, you know, they're, they're pretty thick, but then you try to like stand on a bookshelf with some other booklets and then it just, they just like, kind of wave back and forth. And yeah, they're, I'm worried that they're gonna get like bent in half when I try to put something else next to them. That's my biggest concern with these things. Enjoy the Renaissance Fair, Kopaka's cool companion. Real life is important too. Go eat a turkey leg for me. Which are the best part of the Renaissance Fair. So, slow, slowly but steadily, we're coming together here. Does not quite look like anything yet, but presumably we're going to be attaching this on here somehow. We've got these red pins here that will push in to connect it. And uh, once we have the whole front cab going together... Probably the file cabinet is they're too thick to fit in like a single hanging file folder. Otherwise it would just be like what pile them up in the filing cabinet. I actually used to store like pretty much all of my instructions in a filing cabinet. And I've slowly been moving away from that. Um, I've started using big three ring binders. And so the problem I had with storing instructions in a filing cabinet was, you know, a lot of instruction books are like only like that big or something like that, or like maybe like that big or, you know, not eight and a half by 11. So you try to put them in a file folder it's designed for eight and a half by 11 files. And you end up getting a file folder where like the middle gets like to be this thick and then it kind of narrows down to the ends. And it just makes it really, uh, really inefficient use of space. So again, I got some like three ring binders with fairly large rings, like, you know, whatever, like two, three inch rings. And then I found, um, you know, if you ever collected any sort of cards, either like magic cards or baseball cards, or whatever, uh, you could get like those sheets that store like nine cards per page. Well, they make those sorts of pages in different sizes, or, or sorry, with different size pockets, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so they have some out there that do a pretty good job of fitting different size Lego instructions. And so I've got a lot of my instructions actually moved into the filing of those three ring binders. It's been working pretty well. You just kind of have to keep on yourself to every time you build a set to file it away and not let like a pile gather, which happens sometimes too.
And see what I tried to do with that is you know I have the three ring binders and I try to put like the these thick instruction books that obviously wouldn't fit in the three ring binders just kind of like standing up next to them and they end up falling over a lot. So always kind of keeping my eye open for other ideas on that uh, in that regard so if anyone has any good ideas for storing lego instructions let me know especially since there are some sizes of instruction manuals that don't lend themselves well to the binder approach I tried looking, Anthony, for that heavy forklift set on Brickside. I did a quick search, and I couldn't find any sets with that name. So if you give me like the set number or something, I will try to look it up. backwards. Yeah, you're definitely right there, Ignika. With all the different sizes that Lego instruction manuals come in, it does make for uh, no for make it make the yeah, it does make it difficult to find a single solution. Yes. I think this is going to be kind of like the center console where you'd have like the shifter and the emergency brake in here and I think the steering wheel is going to be connecting onto that. Right, have you attach. Center you up there. Yeah, we can kind of see that coming together. All right, hopefully I'll see you later, Anthony Wynn. Thanks for joining us.
lots and lots of Technic pins going in here. Look at all those friction pins. It's like a friction pin palooza. How does this go in? Uh -huh. We don't get to build the seats. I don't know that I've ever uh, seen in a Technic set a beam that gets a friction pin in every hole. At least, like, not as you follow the instructions. Maybe eventually you'll, like, attach another assembly to something and that will do it. But it's not like put a beam or put a pin in every hole in this beam. Hey there, Andrew. Welcome to the stream. How to do one of these properly, but mess the other up.
seats are definitely coming together. I feel like every time I build a seat in a Technic set, I end up missing the days when we used to have Technic figures to go in the seats. Here are our finished chairs, complete with an adjustable headrest for your comfort. Wonderful. They do not uh, really lean back or anything. They're pretty much in a fixed position. And yeah, Andrew, so having the Technic figures did certainly encourage a particular scale, undoubtedly. I don't think, I don't know, my, my experience, I feel like Technic sets have never tried to like stick to one specific scale. Although maybe I'm just looking at it from my perspective where like I wouldn't expect every single Technic set to be able to fit a Technic figure. But if it, some did and some didn't, that wouldn't be very tenable or would be confusing to the consumer. I'm sure there's a lot of thought that went into it. It's always easy for, you know, us as a foals to say, oh, Lego should do this, but chances are someone in Lego has already thought of that and determined why they can or can't do it. So we got a bunch more flick fires going in. And again, we're using the construction technique where the bars here will fit inside the Technic pinholes. Not always easily, but they do fit. Now probably the 
think it's one of the only, if not the only, printed piece we've had in this set. Oh, no, actually, I see another one. But it's the minifigure shield, so you can see the handle on the back. But it's got the Mercedes-Benz logo printed on it. So that's really cool. Um, and that, of course, is going to go right in the middle of our grill here, which we're about to make look pretty with some tiles. There we go, put some tiles on it. Also, it looks like a truck grill. Go figure. Definitely starting to come together. Captain Mercedes Benz, huh? I think. These might be part of the doors, or otherwise, ah, some sort of wall panel. Get in there, come on. Taking these back off because I have to sticker them up. Each one of these gets two stickers. One of them is pretty long. Those are always tricky to center on a Technic beam kind of thing like this, where the end of the beam curves. So it's kind of hard to get a good idea of uh, like centering where the where the edge is. That looks pretty good. So yes, definitely the doors. So here's one set of stickers. You can see it says Arox 3245. And it's got a printed door handle on there. Kind of a shame that the door handle is not brick built. Because we have seen that in some other models. Welcome back, Lego Teen Builder. I 
and there is the other door. So now I've had to guess this is going to be the front of the cab like that. Yeah, there are definitely, I definitely remember a couple of the stickers in the Jurassic Park set that were rather tricky. And it does take some practice using the knife to apply them, but you can get there. Just uh, do it on some sets you don't care about the stickers too much first. So Lego Teen Builder, I believe it is an exclusive print. I want to say Toe of Pi clued us in on that either yesterday or last weekend. It definitely is a printed logo. Uh, thankfully they have not gotten to the point where they ask us to apply stickers to round shields. Uh, now I have to apply, this is probably going to be the m most annoying stickers, I have to apply one to this main Technic panel here. Might need a second knife for this. It's not only is it big, but it's oddly shaped. Alright, there we go. All that to say, make us say a rooks on that side and have the little Mercedes Benz logo on the top. Honestly, I would have rather had two separate little stickers to put on than one big one. That's just me. I'm sure, again, that uh, there's reasons for doing it like they do. And now this just 
pops onto the front here. And it's starting to look like a truck cab. Some good choices of sets there in dollar. Maybe lock in the top of the door here. There we go. That's nice and sturdy, not going to fall off on us. I am, however, sensing some more stickers because I believe there's some rear view mirrors we're going to have to do eventually. Assuming I'm probably going to have to do this all over again, but mirrored. But I'm holding out hope that maybe there's something a little different in the other door. Time for another sticker. Even that's going on that same kind of panel as that front one. Actually, no, I think it's a little smaller of a panel. But it's a smaller sticker, so not as annoying. So this one says Blue Tech 6. I'm guessing that is the, uh, the type of engine. Right, 
definitely know it's a six cylinder engine engine, so I'm just assuming it's a blue tech. sticker and this part at least is going to be asymmetric from the other side of the build there's only one of these stickers so here we've got a little sticker that looks like oh is that a corrugated metal so there's a little step, and if we put this on here, so I think that kind of completes the driver's side of the cab. So you can a little step up, I guess, so he can get in more easily. Although it seems a little high for that, maybe for, it's for something else, but definitely starting to look like a cab. Go on here. Now I could do all this fun stuff on the other side, but slightly different. holes line up there we go not the right way. It does feel like we're starting to run a little low on pieces here. So hope we'll be finished up with the cab in no time.
It's trying to get low on stickers, but there are still quite a few here. So on the driver's side, we have that little step thing on the passenger side. We have this, which I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Now it looks like perhaps we're doing the uh, wheel wells or fenders, whatever you want to call them. All right, see you later, dollar. Enjoy orientation. Hope it goes well. If you suddenly disappear, we'll know what happened. Got sucked into college life. Interesting that we're doing the wheel wheel for this side before the other. I don't think it matters that much, but I'm just curious. Where is this supposed to attach to? Is it going? Ah, oh, there is a connection point under there. Okay. There we go. Now let's do it again, but different. Attached to the other side.
Obviously the cab still needs a roof. So it looks like that is part of what we're working on next. Well, first we're going and finishing off the interior, it looks like, including the uh, dashboard. And that includes a dark gray 1x4 printed tile there with some gauges and dials. And that's going to pop on right here. Now for the steering wheel, just going to have a stickered part on it. Looks like a little Mercedes Benz logo. So unfortunately not a printed part here. A printed one by one round tile, but a stickered one by one round tile. There you go. So now we've got our steering wheel in there. It does kind of obstruct the view of those dials, um, but oh well. All right, where does this connect? Ah, there's a little connector point from way back when. Can I give some nice shaping to the front of the cab there? Looks like we're heading back to the roof, which definitely still needs some work. Well, 
Only if I can find the piece I need. There it is. So I see there is a slight difference between the two sides of what I'm about to build, so I won't build them both at the same time. So you can see some slight differences between the two sides. By some, I mean mainly one. This has got this little bit sticking out. That one does not. Of course, we have that little difference from before. So it's close to symmetric, but not quite. Alright, roof is coming together. 
So it needs a sticker. I guess it has a moon roof or something on it. Emergency exit hatch, maybe. Whatever the sticker is supposed to be of, it's a pin to apply. There we go. Not the worst, but not the best either. There we go. Where that big black spot supposed to be. Now yeah, it's just supposed to pop on here, I guess. Just a few Technic pins. Really starting to look like a cab here. That's interesting. So these flick fire missiles that are sticking out of here look like one of their purposes at least is to help keep this part at an angle to give us the shape of the front windscreen. Close. Interesting. So we've got this piece here that we're just assembling. And that goes on the side of here. And then we flip it back. Kind of have to tweak it a little bit. There we go. And push these pins in here. And I guess it's kind of a hand, I guess it's a handrail to go with the step down here. And it kind of complements this thing over here, which we may yet put something like that on this side. Or not. That's the next step. We covered up with something else. Now 
we added on the these beams to give the finished look of the windscreen. And of course the doors still open fully there. Very nice. I think we're just about done. Definitely need to still do the side view mirrors, and that looks like that is what is coming up next. And then some more finishing touches, and then I'll be done with this group of parts. Welcome back, Anthony. And so the two rear view, the rear view mirrors are slightly different. So we're building the first one right now. Fortunately, it doesn't have a reflective, like an actual reflective sticker on it, like some sets have done. But it is like a nice kind of silvery sticker. It gives you the appearance of a rear view mirror. That attaches onto the door. So now kind of kind of makes the door look a little more complete because before you know there's not like a middle part here, but that kind of covers that up. And you have this little movable rear view mirror, side view mirror, whatever you want to call it. Now you get to the other side. Interesting. On this one, they're saying apply the sticker to the tile before you assemble it. On the last one, they said do it after. So, presumably, there's a reason for that. Like, I'm going to be covering up part of the tile to make it difficult to access. So, designers usually know, or instruction designers usually know what they're talking about with this kind of stuff. So, I'll trust them. So the passenger side, we kind of have a compound side view mirror. Show it off in a second. Attaches on the same way as the driver's side, but the design is slightly different. So you can see there's this additional one on the top here, uh, I guess, so they can check down into their blind spot better. Or that might give you a little better look at it. And you can see, obviously, because of this guy, that's why I want us to put the sticker on this 2x4 tile first, because once this thing is in place, it's impossible to get to that 2x4 tile easily to put a sticker on.
Jeez, Voxima, how late did you stay up last night? Can't be that early over in Alaska. The stream will end when the set is done, and not a moment before. I honestly do not know when that will be. It'll be when it will be. We're almost done with bag five, which is the cab here. And then we still have bag six, which is going to be the dump bed, but there's a lot less parts, so... Um, I would g hope in a little over an hour we'll be wrapping things up. And so now we have yet another piece of our compound mirror now going around to the front so he can see all of his blind spots. All right, I am realizing that most of these trays are empty now. Get them out of the way. All right, since it does look like we're pretty much done here, I'm gonna go ahead and put up our giveaway link uh, now, a reminder, I mentioned this at the top of the stream, but for everyone who wasn't here then, this is a continuation from yesterday's giveaways. So if you won yesterday, you're not going to win today. And if you entered yesterday, you do not need to enter again. Uh, if you do enter again anyway, we'll be filtering out those duplicate entries so it does not increase your chance of winning. Alright, getting low on stickers. Looks like there will only be five. Yep, five after this one. Oh wow, Voxman, that is definitely very intense. I don't think I could ever do an overnight shift in a job like that, so... Many, many appreciations to you tuning in, despite your sleep-deprived state. So the cab is complete, complete little antenna there. Let's get all this stuff out of here. And now we get to mount it onto here. All right, let's see. How is this all supposed to go together? Let's go on there. Now we'll start with that. Let's see where we go from there. Come on, Technicon. It's lined up, but does not want to go all the way in there. It's hard when you're just doing this by touch, you can't really see what you're doing. Just 
just have to imagine the force flowing through me, right? Come on. I think I had the better angle before. Got one of four pins. Two of four, now I just have to figure out where the other two actually connect to. I think somewhere on these black beams, but it's kind of hard to tell where exactly. several points where they could line up on these black beans. Maybe that's the next step. Aha, see they weren't even showing me where it was supposed to connect. I may have been way off my connection point. Alright, supposed to go all the way down here. So the fact that it looks like it's trying to pop off is actually, I believe, a design feature because it's supposed to do that. And then just kind of like a real truck, if you need to access the service, the engine, this whole thing comes up. So let's do a quick uh, demo from the more top view. So when this tilts forward, you can see the engine in there. So you can still see all that work you did getting the, uh, the engine to work and the pistons to spin which are spinning because of the differentials. But that's pretty cool. And how like nice and easy that motion is there. Very cool. And now it looks like we are well on our way to being done. And that was it for bag five. Alright, so now that bag four, bag five is done, 
No mooses have been fed. Time to pick a couple of winners since that took us over two hours to do. Longer than our usual break between bags. All right, Ignica, congratulations. You have won a Sergeant Jin Urso buildable figure. And Mr. Lego Lover 55, congratulations. You have won a Kylo Ren buildable figure. So we'll be getting in touch with both of you guys to get you your prizes. Um, as we talked about yesterday, uh, we're a bit behind on shipping prizes, thanks to all the sets LEGO sent us blocking the, where all of my shipping supplies are. So once we dig everything out, we'll start going through the backlog. And now, without further ado, let's open up our final set of bags. Only two main bags for six, although they do have some smaller ones inside. And lots of big Technic panels, since we're going to be doing the dumper bed here. This thing needs a carry handle to make it easy to pick up and move around. sorting with all these big parts. Others little parts sometimes get stuck in them and then it's hard to find the little parts. So I'm taking out all these big technic panels here. You can see there's some in both of these bags. If you see the camera shifting around that's because there's a Jojo nuzzling against it. are organized. Let's start building. I have shelf space already allotted for this massive set. No, no, I do not. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that I'll be taking next weekend off from doing a build, since it will give me some time to think about where this will go. In the meantime, it will just stay right here on this table.
Oh, hi there, Jojo. You gonna come sit on my lap while I stream? Say hi to all the people on the internet, Jojo. You just say purr, purr, purr. I know. Yes, Jojo is a cat. If he gets adventurous, he might decide to hop up on the table and then you'll get to see him in all of his kitty glory. It's really not a lot of kitty glory. He's a pretty little cat, but he's cute. Yes, we're talking about you. Is a Russian blue. Yeah, you can see that uh, this dumper bed definitely taking a lot less time to put together thanks to all these big Technic panels. Are you going to help me turn the page there? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see his head on the stream. Okay, you can see him trying to stick his head underneath the instructions. Of course, like any cat, he likes to scratch his face and nose and stuff. Just don't try eating it, please.
I miss a blue pin? Looks like I missed a blue pin. Oh, sad, just time to get down. It's usually how it goes. He's like, give me attention, I will jump on your lap. Okay, that was it, bye. So, I'm not sure why I didn't just tell us to build, okay, there's, these are essentially identical, except one has these two little Technic pins with studs on it, otherwise they are the same. And now we combine them. And we are starting to have a dumper bed. And we're going to make a slightly modified one with a front on it.
Okay. This Technic stuff goes uh, a lot faster. You don't have to worry about gears or hoses. Go figure. Okay, yeah, so I think the main bed is just about done once I connect this up. Although I think we'll probably do something along the top edge here. Only if I can get all these pins lined up. But we still have to do a tailgate on the back, of course. There we go. Yeah, you can see this part is still, still a little wobbly, but I'm sure we're going to be putting some beams along this whole top edge to help make the, the walls more rigid. But before that, we flip it over. And this will be where we attach it to the uh, motorized lifting area. Hey there, Voximo. Yes, the, this part goes a lot faster when we're dealing with all these big Technic tiles. For which I would say I'm pretty thankful for. So maybe this isn't where it's going to attach. I think we may be building something that's going to attach to this that will attach to the bed. Because nothing can be simple. Simplicity is an illusion. That is pretty deep there, Voxima. Or maybe this will be the tailgate. I suppose we'll have to wait and see. Yep, okay, I guess this is indeed the tail or part of the tailgate. 
This is going on the back of the truck. Here's the spot where the tailgate will attach. So I've got a lot of beams left, but only one big Technic panel. So I can't be building too much stuff. Oh, I've got two of our last few stickers coming in in just a couple of steps. I've right, got a couple of our trees emptied. So these are actually going to be the same stickers we put on the legs here, this kind of caution stripe. But now they're going on the back of the tailgate. Caution, do not rear end this vehicle. It will hurt you more than it hurts it. There we go. Nice little caution stripes. And now, I'm just kind of rest this in here for now. It's not attached to anything just yet. Got a couple of axles we stick in here. Interesting, now it can't go up or down. Ah, okay. So see, it won't open, but then when we flip that, now it can. So cool little feature there. Another sticker going on. This one actually helps show off that play feature. So it's a yellow sticker with a black arrow. This is the lock on it. They'll point at that little lever that I was just showing off.
And the next step is just 15 friction pins. And that looks like we're going to be working on that edging I was talking about before along the top here to give it some additional strength. We've got a bunch of dark gray Technic beams left that we'll be putting into position. Another 15 friction pins. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess it's gonna be just about all of the friction pins we have left, other than the spares that come in the set. Start putting these Technic beams in place along the top here. That definitely makes the front a lot stronger. I did something wrong here. One of these beams was not the right beam. That one goes up here. And it's slightly smaller. There we go. So now apparently to attach it, we've got to raise the bed connector th assembly up. We're gonna have to turn that on flip that back and you can see that will raise up a bit there probably would help this one nope all right you guys go back and rotate the crane out of the way and so now there are a couple of pins here Attach. Not there. Come back off. Let go. that one found it. there we go and I can push those red pin bushing combos in here to really lock it into place kind of 
Come on. Just flip it around so I can see what I'm doing better. That one. All right, let's see what else we got to do after that. Yeah, yeah. All right, looks like this is the last step. Anything else? Just showing off all the different features, but I think we've already figured out most of those. Don't worry, we will be showing them off. Part inventory. Okay, let's get that last pin in place. does not want to go, does it? There we go. All right. Okay, so we are done. So just put the giveaway link back up. And we'll now show off all this fun stuff we just built. And uh, then, yeah, we'll pick our final few winners. Okay. So here we have it. The Mercedes-Benz Arokes 3245. Uh, in all of its glory. Can't even see the top of the crane from uh, on the stream because it is so tall, let's say. All right, so now one of these is the pump. That one, let's see if we can lower this down. There we go. Well, that's better, I guess. All right, enough of that noise for now. So we're gonna start by looking at um, all of the, I guess, non-motorized features first. So let's uh, tilt it on its side a little bit so you can see the undercarriage here. So we can, we have the, all four of the front wheels have linked steering that's controlled by the trans orange knobs on the top so it's really cool and uh, despite them all being linked each wheel has its individual suspension so the front wheels have pretty uh, heavy duty shocks with a, a lot of resistance on them uh, then we can see I'm not sure you can really see too much from up here but there is an engine here and it kind of comes down through and you can see the linkage here you can see there's a drivetrain that spins both of the rear axles. So it's got uh, all, I guess it's got four out of eight axles, uh, we'll, we'll, or drive axles. So it's a four by eight, I think uh, would be the technical term. And both of the rear axles uh, have their own uh, differential so that, you know, for driving this, I can stop one of the wheels and the other three will still spin, thanks to that differential. Uh, so pretty cool there. 
And again, each of these wheels has its own suspension as well. It's a bit, uh, bit looser uh, than on the front. And you can actually sp kind of spin them in opposite directions. Um, and the way it's constructed, that the wheels can still spin even if both of the axles are at different angles from each other. So that is pretty nifty there. Uh, this thing needs a carry handle. So we saw this a little bit earlier today, but on the front cab, we've got both of the windows or doors here open up, and you can kind of see the uh, the interior there. It's got a couple of seats and a steering wheel. Um, it's got like a little step and a handlebar here for the driver to, uh, uh, or not the driver, for I guess a passenger to hang on. And uh, we got the nice detailed front cab here with the grill, with a nice kind of slope on that, and of course the Mercedes-Benz logo, which is printed on a shield. We've got the license plate, and uh, then the other cool thing is the front here actually comes off, and so then you can uh, see the engine down there. And let's see if I can get there. We go. So it's an inline six engine, so six cylinders. And you can see that those do uh, fire as the wheels spin. So that's a cool, another cool play feature there. All right. And so you can see the steering function here. Very nice. Some pretty decent handling. You can see the suspension work in there as I push down on it. So really cool. Lots, lots of attention to detail in it. I mean, it doesn't have like a you know, six-speed transmission or anything on it, but it's still pretty, uh, pretty sweet. All right. Uh, other little details, we do have the, uh, the exhaust pipe there on the side. Um, oh, one other thing I was realizing as I was putting this bed on, um, I think we built these yesterday, these little yellow things. And I was like, what are these little yellow things on here? And at one point, one of them popped off. I'm like, that's kind of dumb. But as I was putting the bed on, I realized what these are. They're... Uh, chocks for the wheels here. Let me see if I can find this other one. So you can put them between the wheels uh, so then it's not going to roll around on you. Now obviously this is Lego and these things don't really have a lot of friction on them um, but uh, you can kind of get the idea. So it still will roll a little bit with them on there but it's a cool little attention to detail uh, that they included those on the build. All right, so I think that's about it for the non-motorized play features. Let me check the chat real quick, see what you guys are saying, and uh, then we'll move on to some of the motorized stuff. Yeah, Maxima, the, the chocks are a little, maybe re slightly redundant because of the extendable legs that will be showing off shortly. But um, yeah, I guess there are times where you know you're not using the crane, and if you're just using the dumper, you would only want to, you, know, you only need to chalk the wheels a little bit. You don't need to take the time to fully extend the supports. How many parts does it have? Let me pull up that overlay real quick. Two thousand seven hundred and ninety-three parts. All right, and how much would I guess it weighs? Um, a good amount. I would probably say over five pounds, uh, maybe closer to like seven or eight. Yeah, it is a very hefty thing. It could definitely use like a handle somewhere to pick it up by, because um, especially with like the suspension, you really have to kind of find like some good spots underneath to pick it up that you're not going to like break something or have stuff move around under your hands. Okay, so um, it does have a transmission in here, not for the engine, but for the different functions. And there are four different motorized functions. And one of those motorized functions is a, an air pump for the crane here. And before we get too far, I know we're having some issues with uh, 
on the extending thing earlier, so let me just double kind of check those connections. They look pretty good, at least the ones I can see. Um, so yeah, so we've got our battery box up here. It is designed so that if we uh, pull that forward and we can take out these pins, one on either side there, and if you, if you disconnect it, the battery box comes right out so you can change the batteries. So that is a super convenient design um, that you don't have to go digging in. I remember one of the first mocks I made that had power functions, I did not design for that. Um, and then every time the batteries died and I had to swap them out, it was like a whole thing where I had to you know, kind of disassemble a good portion of the mock. Uh, later on, redesigned the mock to, uh, to not have that issue. All right, so there's uh, the switch. You know, the power function switch can go in two directions. Apparently, I have one of the transmissions engaged. So each side of the Arox has a three-position switch here. Um, if I push it in either forward or backwards, that will um, initiate one of the features. And in one direction, if I want to go in the opposite direction, I have to flip the switch on here. So it's a little, um, you know, a little annoying, I guess. So the first one we have here is these extendable support legs, as Voxima mentioned. And there's a clutch gear so that once they reach the maximum, they uh, don't kind of burn out the gears. And they do have little thumb screws uh, to finish the job. So you can really kind of get the weight off the tires there. Once you put those in, this thing isn't going to roll around that all that easily. Uh, the next feature is the crane will spin. And so I, there's kind of the range of motion. There are limiters on it, so it can't spin all the way around, which is probably a good design. Um, and you kind of have to you know, just switch it back and forth. All right, and we'll take that out of gear. Uh, let's see, our other features, let's see if I do this right, there we go, we've got our dumper bed. And so with the dumper out of the way, I guess the crane arm is kind of in the way now, let's, uh, oh. let's move this out as much as we can. And you guys can see a little bit of the transmission here and how that works. So that's pretty, pretty neat. Um, all the different gears and stuff going on in there. When it's in neutral, you know, you don't have to worry about anything uh, jamming. And so once the dumper bit is up, we have our little locking mechanism. And we can do that in theory. There we go. We can open up the, uh, the dumper, the tailgate on the dumper bed. And then we can lock that back in place there. And it will kind of fall out on its own. Let's, does it go up any more? Where is that? Oh. Spin that way. All right, that is about as high as it goes, it looks like. So we can put that back down. Maybe. Oh, there we go. I'll double check if that's as high as it goes. Oh, no, okay, it goes even higher. I was wrong. All right. So once you get it that high, then the tailgate will flap out really easily. I know that's a little hard to see from this angle. Um, as far as how all of, you know this is motorized, there was there's one medium motor that drives the transmission, and that will you know, do the tailgate or sorry the support arms, and it spins the motor and it powers the pump. Uh, and then there's a linear actuator that this connects to that uh, does the tailgate here, or the dumper bed. Uh, do, do, do. Where did I get this from? Uh, Lego sent it to us uh, near the end of last year, and I believe it has gone out of print since then, so it is no longer readily available, unfortunately. And uh, someone said in the chat, the battery box I was showing off before is powered by six AA batteries. All right, so let's see. That should lower our bed down. 
slowly but surely. Alright, and our last feature is the pneumatic pump. So I just put it in that position for the pump. And so now there are, you can see these two valves over here. Uh, I can't really see them. Let's see, let's move, can move the crane, not that way. Switch that, move the crane the other way. Alright, and so you can see these two valves here, they have nice little stickers on them. There's another set on the other side. And each one of those valves um, controls a feature on the arm. So there are four different pneumatic cylinders. Um, and so we can show those off. So there is the arm going up. So that is uh, this pneumatic cylinder up here extending. And then we can retract that. And it retracts a lot faster than it extends. Um, so yeah, pretty neat there. And you don't have to have the pump running while you're doing this, but eventually you'll run out of air in the tubes, and uh, then you'll have some issues. So then we also have the claw here. Oh, that's the wrong way. There we go, the claw. Fear the claw. Um, it doesn't really have a huge amount of grabbing force, uh, as we were kind of demonstrating yesterday as I was trying to pick up a minifigure. Um, it, it was more effective at knocking over the minifigure and then it was at picking him up, but I did get it eventually. So that's pretty cool there. Um, so let's, let's see. If I lower this down, no, too much. Lower it down a little. And we've got our other two functions here. Let's see if I can get this working. Oh. So that is this cylinder here. You just saw it go down, and now it's going back up. And then the other one should be this guy, should extend and retract. That's the one I was having some issues with before, and it doesn't look like it wants to work right now. So it may be one of these hoses got loose somewhere along the way. Uh, one thing I'm kind of curious as far as how high can this thing go. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it on the stream because my camera isn't big enough, but maybe I'll, I'll adjust the camera a little bit so you guys can check out how high we can get this. Alright, so those cylinders are both at their max. I'm going to turn this off for a sec because the noise is kind of annoying. And we'll uh, raise the camera up a little bit. And raise camera, maybe a lot of bit to get everything in there. So you can see that um, it's pretty tall um, and it's probably not fully extended because this thing can go a little higher here once we figure out why that's not working and so thankfully with these supports it's not gonna you know the whole thing isn't gonna tilt over or anything it's you know it's uh, pretty sturdy um, it's not not going anywhere easily now uh, because you're not really gonna be picking up a lot with uh, with the claw you don't have to worry about like that knocking it over but so even with it at its kind of maximum let's uh, turn off our pump here and so we can like still spin this around. Oh, oops. So we can still kind of spin it back and forth there. And you know, it's not tipping over or anything, so that's pretty nice. Okay. So I do kind of want to look into a little more why the extending mechanism is not working. I can feel that there's a good bit of pressure in the hoses here. Is that this one? Like if anything, I thought it would be the claw that uh, would have some issues because there's a kind of little kink in that hose. So unfortunately, if the issue with the extender is like somewhere down in the bowels of the pneumatic assembly, that'll be a little harder to, to check on, but let's see. So that's supposed to be this one. Those connections look good. And they go here. And there. And they go down inside and come out. 
to this. I don't see anything that looks wrong on it. Which one? Alright, now that we've got it flipped around, let's see if we can... There we go, turn this to this way. Turn the pump on again. And see if we can play with this some more. So that should be this guy coming in and out. Oh. There's definitely some pressure built up in the, the line there, you can see. Alright. Let's uh, lower our camera back down. Oh, <laughs> and there all of a sudden you might have seen the uh, the arm just extended. So let's see if we can get that to do its thing. So that's out and in. All right, so maybe uh, when I have the arm like slam down, that knocks something loose. So there's the last function on the pneumatic arm. Very nice. All right, I'm glad we got all those working. So yeah, that is uh, this Mercedes-Benz Arux 3245. Lots and lots of features. Also a lot of fun to build. You know, it took, uh, what, I guess almost nine hours. So we did three three days of streaming last Saturday and then yesterday and today. Um, and it was, each stream was about three hours. And of course, you know, we do the giveaways and stuff in between to so add some extra time. But uh, not a, a simple build by any means, especially the, those first couple bags where you're doing like all the transmission and drivetrain stuff. Today was you know relatively easy doing the dumper bed and the cab where it's just kind of, there's no mechanics or anything to it. You're just uh, kind of assembling uh, technic bits. So yeah, uh, I think it's time for us to do our last two giveaways. Let me see if uh, anyone has any questions in the chat and I will go answer those while we pick our winners. The cursed splats are pretty awesome, yeah. Um, the, the pneumatic cylinders like to retract a lot faster than they extend, go figure. Um, that you got to be really careful, you got to kind of gradually release the pressure in, in the valve. Like you just, if you just do it a little bit, that kind of slows it down. you got to be ready to put it back up. And uh, again, without the compressor running, there's not enough pressure to have it go back up. All right, so minifig collector, congratulations. You have won a Sergeant Jin Urso buildable figure. Uh, what else we got in the chat? Um, did I search up the heavy forklift? I tried to look for it earlier, and I could not find it on Brickset. Um, so I was not able to look that up, Anthony. Apparently they have redesigned these valves. Thank you, Andrew, for letting us know. They have a slightly new design for the valves on this year's set. So this set came out in, I want to say, 2015, maybe? Uh, so it is a few years old, so they have do have some newer parts since then. All right, time to pick our last winner. And then we're going to be uh, done for today. Tolerant X97, congratulations, you have won a K2SO buildable figure. So we'll be getting in touch with you guys, as well as everyone who won yesterday as well, as well, as well, as well, um, to get in touch with you so you can get your prizes. Again, we are a bit behind on our prizes, uh, since I cannot get to my shipping supplies currently, thanks to LEGO sending us a whole bunch of uh, buildable figures as I sort through those and eventually get to uh, my shipping supplies, we'll start sending out prizes again. So thank you guys all, as always, for joining us. I definitely appreciate it. Um, and uh, we will not be streaming next weekend. I will be out of town for some non-LEGO related stuff. I know it's shocking. I do do non-LEGO related stuff sometimes, though. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so we'll be back hopefully in a couple of weeks. Um, we've asked Lego for uh, some sets uh, potentially. And uh, if they are able to fulfill that request and we get those in the next couple of weeks, we'll probably do a build of one of those when I get back. Uh, if not, we do still have some sets uh, in, in uh, storage from my personal collection that we can always do some builds of. So yeah, uh, thanks again, everyone. A pleasure as always. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, any feedback you have, you can always send personally to me, Andrew at bzpower.com. And we do look through everything you guys put in your giveaway requests, uh, giveaway entry forms for what you'd like to see us build in the future. And we do try to go off of that when we're uh, planning future giveaways. So, uh, for example, Aaron, I know, has been uh, lobbying for more Technic builds. So this, this build is essentially for him. It's for me, too. I enjoy Technic, and this was a lot of fun. And clearly a lot of you guys enjoyed it, too. So... Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, put, put what you want to see, um, in those forms and we will do our best to, uh, to accommodate as many of those requests as we can. Um, I know people still want to see the Matt Nui online game too, and some other old Bionicle games. Uh, once we figure out the logistics to make that happen, it will happen as well. Um, but I don't know when, when that will be. Uh, okay. So I think that's going to be about it. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks. And uh, until then, keep on building. And this is Black Six from BZ Power signing off.